YouTube. We are going to pick up a couple of, see if I can say this right, Gloucestershire Old Spots. They are a breed of pigs that come directly from Great Britain and we are going to see a farmer by the name of Brandon who is the purveyor of Raising Roots Farm in North Carolina and he is bringing back GOS which is their acronym pigs to the western side of our wonderful state. He has been raising them there for a couple of months and we are going to meet him uh, on his place because I'm going to pick them up now. And we are unbelievably excited because one of my favorite animals to raise on the farm is a pig. I don't think any homestead should not have pigs. Uh, not only for the companionship that they provide while they're you know, on your land, but the fact that they are just such wonderful foragers and you know, we give them all of the vegetable scraps that we can't use from our gardens and you know, just some other yummy things that we just can't use or consume ourselves and they absolutely adore it. We've got walnuts on the property that we give to them and they are just phenomenal animals and we are excited to show you our little journey to go picking them up today. So enjoy! So uh, I'm Brandon and this is my wife Jennifer and we started Raising Roots Farm two and a half years ago now, okay. about that. It started in our backyard inside uh, Hickory City Limits and we, we created a greenhouse there with uh, aquaponics, 17 koi, and we grew kind of more of a laboratory, all kinds of different aquaponics growing uh, methods. We have, um, we do media, we, we've done floating wrap, which is DWC stuff, we did vertical towers, buckets of media, the whole thing. And we got really enamored with it. And we also found that we just love working together. And uh, so we decided to scale that up and we didn't want to go too crazy and we didn't want to go into debt and, and, and all that. So we wanted to kind of be smart about it. So we, we started scaling. Uh, we selected this greenhouse, um, which we got out of salvage about 8,000 square foot and we plan on uh, doing a deep water culture which is D DWC uh, floating rafts in here alongside uh, uh, media based growing and we selected uh, aquaponics as sort of our farming venture because we really believe in sustainable agriculture we really want to bring uh, something cool to hickory something innovative my background is in software and so we're we're fully expecting you know, to experiment here, do uh, automation and, and uh, bring technology and, and agriculture together. Um, we believe in bringing uh, this whole thing to Hickory for an affordable price too. So it's not just about sustainability on the agriculture side. We believe food should be really accessible to people. Uh, we don't want to price out uh, our product uh, from, from just regular folks with, with, you know, decent paying jobs. 
So uh, in addition to aquaponics, we wanted to have a protein and we chose pigs. Uh, we were really attracted to the Gloucestershire Old Spots or, or gauze or GOS pigs because they're a heritage breed that have a really wonderful story with respect to uh, uh, kind of how, how they've thrived as a, uh, uh, as a breed. They were basically entirely extinct from the United States uh, until well, I guess the 40s or something like that when it when when they came back somebody brought over breeding pairs from the UK and they began making a comeback they're still not quite uh, out of the um, you know their, their, their critical status they're uh, we're still only around 2,000 or so registered births per year and uh, so they you know they they need more breeders they, they need more folks consuming the meat and consuming the product in order for them to continue to make a comeback their meat uh, is given a tsg certification which requires for a minimum of 30 years their meat product be consistent uh, that is consistently distinguished among anyone else in their class uh, and they have they have that certification now for for uh, quite a number of years their their meat quality is fantastic uh, I think if you just ask Frank, he'll tell you all about um, how much he likes the Trezo and, and, and their And their that's, a, that's exactly why I'm here. Yeah. Not only to make some new friends, but they have GOS pigs. Yep, that's right. <laughs> uh, so we really believe in them so much that we're, you know, we're bringing in good genetics from across the states and, and we, we really, uh, we're really focused on not only bringing a good meat quality or good meat product to the table, but also uh, for folks who want to raise their own pigs or do their own breeding programs, we really want to have good genetics here on the East Coast. And there's a few other places on the East Coast that, um, uh, that, that have those good bloodlines. So that's kind of us in a nutshell on what we're doing. We, we started out with about seven acres and it's just a big work in progress. It's, you know, our, our vision it looks, looks different than, than where it's at today, but it's, it's a family affair here. All of our kids are homeschooled. We, uh, it's a full, everybody has a job or a chore or an interest on the farm. Um, we all get out here and, and chip away at our perimeter fence. We've got pasture coming online the end of this year where the, uh, our pigs will be under rotation, uh, which is the way they're supposed to be. We believe in natural processes. We're not seeking a USDA organic certification. We think that our, our standards will meet or exceed that certification. And we don't, we don't want to force that price point on our on our um, on our customers we think USDA makes sense for certain farmers it's just not really part of our journey but but we're really putting together as natural and quality processes and facilities here that we can all the mature tree line is kind of our boundaries more or less uh -huh. uh, and we sort of started um, with everything, you know, with just this real thick stuff you see over there in that little island and, and over there. And we cleared it and started, you know, pigs. And, and over here, we've got our aquaponics greenhouse that's in progress. That's a 20-year-old structure we salvaged out of South Carolina. It's so amazing. And uh, it took us a while to kind of, because it sat open like this, every bolt on it rusted. And so sure. we had to cut hundreds of bolts off this thing just to get it down. Wow. We got it for a hair under a dollar a square foot though, and this is only half the materials we have. We've got 17,000 square foot of materials. We put about 8,100 of it up here, and uh, we just got primary power inspected, which is great. So we are a hop, skip, and a jump away from covering it in plastic. And then, uh, you know, so it's still, you know, we, we've just cleared this over here, I'd say right before summer, and you know, right now they're kind of dirt pigs, but we are very close to getting our pat. This fall we'll seed and get our pasture rotations up and going. Absolutely. She's she's a uh, first generation born in here in the states, but uh, uh, parents are from UK. Parents are from UK. Luther cool. Clevenger brought over um, one breeding pair of every God's bloodline from the UK. So their pedigree here, right. they're, they're just wonderful. Oh, you guys always make such good stars on videos, I tell you what. I got a brother named Louie. We named Louie. them after the, well, you tell it, Jenna, y'all came up with that. We came up with Louie because of the new baby Prince that was born yeah. in the UK. And then we have Ginger because, you know, Ginger Spice. Absolutely. Oh, and then you got the whole, you can do Posh and See, we got a posh. Baby and... 
though I Everything like that. My shoe is not food. Will you stop nipping at me? I don't agree. <laughs> They're like, I'll eat your shoe. Like, I'm not sure, but probably, you, I better taste it. There's probably yeah. something on my shoe that makes them believe that it's edible. Oh, there's likely chicken something, turkey something. Oh, tiny. There might be an old piece of apple on there. So this is the barn that you guys just recently erected? Yeah, we finished this about, uh, let's see, last, yeah, back, back November-ish. So, like super recent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, November, somewhere like that, maybe October, somewhere around there. So we're not really builders, but hey, it works. And yeah. The most amazing thing a bird built a nest with no support under it. You see it over there. Oh, and there's little chicks in there. And you know what's amazing about them? They will be here every single year. They will be back to that nest every single year. I didn't know birds were engineers. Yep. But we have we have barn swallows that come back without Without fail, every single year we have two, three nests inside of our barn, and we just love. They do that. They put mud up there, and they just—that's amazing. That's it. They're amazing. incredible builders. They come down. Well, hi everybody. No, my shoestrings aren't worms. Growers. So these are the grow outs, huh? Yeah. All right. So for those that don't know what a grow out is, what's a what's a grow out, please, Brandon? So these are meat pigs. They're when they start out as piglets, which is piglets, and then you got wieners, which means they just came off mom, mm -hmm. and then you get shoats, which is their next level of progression, which means they've basically grown to the 75 pound mark. Growers are kind of above that on their way to finishers, so they're putting on weights. You see they're a little bit tall right now. If you look at this pig over here, it's, it, he's kind of tall, looks a little lanky. They're in the middle of a growth spurt. So they're, they're, they're shooting straight up. Their legs look kind of tall and lanky. And then they start filling out like this one over here. So he's, he's filling out really nice. And uh, you know, they're, they're growing, literally growers. And you said that from their first farrowing to, from the farrowing into process weight, how long do gosses normally take to grow out? We like about nine months. You can get there, we, and we saw that with our first pigs at about seven, six to seven months. Um, having a pasture program does slow them down a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but we like nine months, and they, they were sitting at about 260, 275 pounds around, around the, okay. the seven, eight month mark, and we had some at the nine to 11 month mark that were about hanging around 300. And so the 9 to 11 month mark then might be like more of your pasture raised rather than your rather than your ones that get like scraps and possibly some grain and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Some supplemental feeds of certain And sort. it just kind of depends on what your preference is with, with slaughter. Some some folks don't like to go a little bit late, but he just looks great, doesn't he? He looks fantastic. He looks fantastic. Are you are you eating my shorts? And some of these like she's going to be one of she's one are of our Are you eating fields. my shorts? She's going into our breeding program. Couple more in here that just look really fantastic. She looks, she looks really wonderful. Here, From what I understand, there are like four different major types yeah. of goss pigs, right? And then could you remind us the colors? Oh, uh, geez. Um, I think it's blue, black, blue, black, green, green and, and I, something else. I don't remember the other ones. Yeah, it no, could reds. be white. I think red. it's red. Okay. Uh, heck, I don't remember. So all of, our, all of ours are registered. Uh, that's, you kind of know just by bloodline, and that's all. Tra if you if you run through a registry, then then that's all tracked. Um, they are, I think, Princess Anne and Rufus, which is each each color group also has a name that's associated with with kind of their lineage. Princess Anne, uh, you got Rufus and Gerald's are on the boar side. Um, anyway, so. Uh, I don't keep all this stuff stored in my head, so I mm -hmm. can't remember all the particulars. But when you re we, we keep up all of our papers and registry, so we know kind of where they come from. There are certain markers that you can catch on the bloodlines, like some will have a little bit longer snouts, um, but that's not exactly dependable because there are, some folks do have success breeding that out of them. But um, yeah, it, it largely, they're, you know, you're not going to see the actual color show up on their skin or anything. That's all just kind of how okay. the bloodlines have all been blood organized blood. and how the registries refer sure. to those various bloodlines. Well, thank you for clarifying yeah. that because that's always been something that I've gotten confused myself with. Yeah. And I think our viewers would appreciate that yeah. um, because they start throwing those names around and or those colors around and you would, I mean, 
quite honestly, because of my ignorance, I always thought that it was because of the color of the skin. I was like, are they like yeah. faintly black then, or faintly yeah, red, exactly. or? You said she has a runny nose? Yeah. Any idea what might be going on with her? Well, she does. And so everybody has their own philosophies and theories on antibiotics and what you should do. And we definitely use them. It's very uncommon. And we, we try to wait it out. And so she's got a runny nose, but she's eating, she's drinking, she's happy. Um, and she'll be fine. So some people get, they're kind of really quick to reach for the needle. Um, they kind of panic, but we like to just let the, you know, a little bit of discharge. I yeah. know, I know. Just let it run its course. Let it run its course. I mean, that's what we humans do. We sit on the couch, we drink, we relax, we don't eat very much, we lose our appetite. Mm -hmm. And so, but it runs its course. And this is a very hardy breed. And, uh, you know, when we get to our pasture rotations, we'll have better control, more natural control over parasites, but they still are very resistant here. We keep things clean. We control water, very little wallows, so we, we try to keep our parasite load just naturally under control. But when it comes to disease, we just, we watch, we monitor. She's got a slight fever. We, we keep really, we pay really close attention to that. And if she's not going to get up and she's not going to move, we'll treat. But there's just no reason to reach for the needle every time something's off, you know. If you think if you're actually uh, constantly tuned into your to your livestock and co constantly tuned into them, you'll you'll get to know sort of what their bodies can handle, and um, it's a little bit nerve-wracking the first time you make those calls. And you don't want to wake up the next morning and have a dead 300-pound dead pig, but, mm -hmm. but it's good to just let nature do its thing. And she'll be stronger for it. She'll be stronger for it, and she'll pass those antibodies off to her young. Absolutely. So for all the would-be folks that believe that pigs don't pasture, um, Jen just threw some, you know, biomass in there, and look at what they're doing already to it. They love it. They love People, it for some reason, believe that pigs don't pasture, and I don't understand why. They sure do. I mean, we have not been in a generation, at least in the last, I mean, think about four or 500 years ago, what did we raise pigs on? This. I mean, did we did we really have a feed store that we could go run out to to nope. go buy a bag of processed feed? They were on wooded lots and pasture and whatever else humans didn't eat. Absolutely. We used to give our pigs um, leftover milk from our Jersey cow. They it adore milk. Gross, but some folks have very successful programs feeding them chicken poop. And uh, some of them just one big happy piggy family. Yeah. That's what they are. The only thing he does is just make sure that the pigs in this pen know that this is his territory. So sure. He's constantly peeing here. <laughs> yep. And they, I mean, guys, I mean, I am probably, okay, let's say, ready? An arm's length away. Doesn't bite, doesn't squeal. They don't ever care about you at all. No, they, they never care about you. He's a good one. For some reason, pigs intimidate folks. But I'm gonna tell you right now, look, this one was just sniffing my leg. They'll, they'll, they'll take little nips at you and stuff like that, but that's because they're testing to see what's food and what's not. So this is the worst part of a pig's day. He thinks that something desperately terrible is gonna happen to him. But this is called wheelbarrowing. Um, as you can imagine, we've been on a playground and this is how we wheelbarrowed each other, doing races and stuff. And Brandon is a seasoned wrangler because honestly, normally most of the time, it's almost impossible to get that back leg. Almost impossible. It's okay, we're not gonna do anything to you. You're gonna be on a brand new place. Good to go. See? 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 All done. Was it worth it? Probably not. <laughs> no. All right, I get to do the second one now, huh? Sure, if you want. Sweet. Is this him? Yeah. It is. Oh, I'm so sorry that you have to go through this ordeal. Like a pro. Hey, buddy. So, hey, you get to go with your brother, so feel love. There you go. 
See? We got a friend in there now. There we go. Yeah. Okay. See? Y'all. All that squealing, okay. but they're not harmed. They're Set happy. The on her also lose it. So then what you want to do is you want to go to their new home. In through the bottom. You can't eat the blue thing. So I'm going in through the center and then come back out toward you. We're so trying to eat okay. it. Okay. Get it tight. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to literally watch your fingers. <laughs> get it started and then just watch your fingers and watch it. That's it. And you don't want to ratchet it unbelievably hard. Actually, matter of fact, let me make it a little easier. Because then you'll know when to stop. There you go. So this is... Uh... We've already processed today. This is a pretty typical meal for them. See, asparagus spears, they get, you know, pineapple and that sort of thing. But this stuff, you know, we're not picking up rotten stuff. These are the things that are chopped up and uh, uh, packaged in those little plastic tubs, you know, that you might go and you, you might buy a pre-processed or pre-cut pre pre pack of, um, uh, pineapples or something well all the all that's happening is somebody is in a back room cutting parts of the pineapple and watermelon up and they're giving the humans the part that they don't want to fuss with so we get all that same day so the most that they're getting is two day old fruits and vegetables and they love it we process and sort it to make sure they're not getting stuff they shouldn't have it's true, pigs will eat everything, but it doesn't mean they should eat everything. We don't give them potatoes, for example. We don't give them sweet potatoes. And we try to keep a good mix of greens and sugars. We keep the rind on to, to keep the fiber up, let their liver help process some of that, that sugar. We've opened them up. Yeah, I've been part of the butcher for these. Their, their, um, their fat is not too soft. You gotta be really careful when you load up pigs on saturated fat, because it'll make their fat really, really soft and not not quite enjoyable for uh, once we actually butcher and eat the pig. Uh, so we, so far, this has been working out really well, and and they gain they gain good weight on it. They're getting good minerals and and, and vitamins from you know good wholesome food. So real deal, what they're doing down here at Raising Roots. He's got it. I mean, way better than we ever we even imagined. I mean, like I thought that we had an okay pig production, a hog production, but. These guys are killer. We're getting there. I'm telling you, man, I just can't wait to see how they grow with it. It'll be pretty awesome to uh, to watch them. So once again, Raising Roots Farm. Check them out, Hickory, North Carolina. Do you see what's happening back there? Oh, yeah, I just got done with Raising Roots Farm. Guys, I am so excited about Raising Roots, and I'm so excited about seeing farmers that are real deal. Brandon and Jen have got a great idea, a great operation, just getting started, and I and Jackie and I are just super excited for them and knowing that what they're gonna do in, what they're gonna do out there is gonna just turn to gold. Uh, we're gonna raise these guys up on our mountain like you've already seen on previous videos or on this video. And uh, we are just so happy and thrilled when we find farmers that are out there with sustainable agricultural in mind. You know, with the fact that they're gonna do the deep water aquaponics with the pigs being raised right there, Man, oh man, am I excited about this. This is gonna be so amazing. It's such a great relationship. So check out Brandon and Jen on Raising Roots Farm on Facebook. And by all means, please look them up, follow them, and they are going to impress you with all the great knowledge that they have and all those great hogs and the aquaponics that they're doing out there. So thanks so much guys for letting me visit your farm and Cannot look, wait to look forward to working with you in the future. Go Post Stop Recording.